Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss the Xperia 1 Mark II from Sony. This is their flagship for 2020 and today I want to share with you guys my list of things that I liked and the things that I did not like about this device in 2020. This is TK, let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. The Sony Xperia 1 Mark II has a lot of things going on for it. First and foremost on the list of things that I definitely enjoy is the fact that that 21 by 9 aspect ratio display, it's a 4K HDR OLED cinema wide display that also has the ability of giving us the experience the way movies were intended to be watched at the cinemas. So keep in mind this is obviously the number one feature, the first and foremost thing that you see out of this device is that you can watch 4K content on a mobile device and of course are able to basically enjoy it from different sources. When we go into the settings tab directly under the display section we have image quality setting and there's a few things here that are done slightly differently than what we've had in the past. We have obviously standard mode, we also have creator mode that gives us the ability of watching basically 10-bit color with HDR specification in 4K and of course a more true to uh, original creator content experience to when we're watching movies. Standard mode is also just the default mode that we're able to enjoy content on the device. It looks pretty good and you're able to optimize it with a couple of things. Um, the auto creator mode is really functional to be able to turn on whenever an application that supports it is able to use it. And in this example, Netflix is set up. So whenever I want to watch Netflix by default, it'll jump into creator mode and it'll jump back out of it whenever it's done. Last but not least, we have video enhanced uh, image enhancement, which gives us the ability of kind of tuning the display to give us a better color representation, uh, brighter popping color as opposed to a little bit more muted here. You'll notice here even on the green colors and it gets even better when we're starting to look at landscapes. This option needs to be turned on, of course, because I feel like it's one of the better options that you need to turn it on. Last but not least is this motion blur reduction. Now, this device has a 60 frames per second or a 60 hertz display. With the motion blur reduction, Sony is uh, saying that we should be able to experience close to a 90 frames per second experience on this 4K panel, even though we do not have 90 frames per second support. And in reality, this actually does work. It provides us an experience. I feel like it's not as good as what we can expect from a 90 hertz, true 90 hertz display, let's say on the OnePlus uh, 7T or even on the OnePlus 8, but definitely a really good option to have. One of the other things I really appreciate the fact is that now under white balance, we also not only have the standard mode of being able to configure the white balancing, but we also have the standard presets, the D50, 55, 61, even D65, all the way up to D93. And of course, we can keep tuning the display to our personal preference. And you can definitely go cooler, warmer, or even just keep it under uh, medium. Also, one thing you want to keep in mind, a lot of these settings that I'm sharing with you guys here, once we go into creator mode, gets disabled. So auto creator uh, mode here, obviously doesn't need to be turned on when we're here, but the video enhancement does get turned off as we're switching over to 10-bit color with HDR. So always a lot of cool things going on with the display. And I think that's one of the biggest thing that I really appreciate about it is the fact that we have the ability of customizing our experience down to the white balance configuration, color uh, representation for movies, as well as watching content. And again, the beauty of it is I can jump into YouTube right now and then I'm actually able to turn on a 4K video and enjoy the exact way it was intended to be played. And when I'm talking about it, even in YouTube, I'm actually able to go into the actual resolution for the display and I can actually go all the way up to 2160p. Again, 1440p, 1080p and 4K is provided to us. And of course, enjoying that directly on our Sony device is absolutely fantastic. And it actually works pretty good. So you're able to basically scrub through. I don't want to jump into any more of those commercials, but you can see how the color looks like. It's absolutely just amazing the way it actually looks like right here. Again, 4K content directly between uh, Amazon Prime, Netflix, or even YouTube, simply done on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Now, the second thing on my list is obviously the ability of using pro-level equipment in a pro mode. Uh, last year in the Xperia 1, the camera application pretty much had a pro version for the camera version. So we have obviously three sensors. Now, all three are 12 megapixel sensors, but they're basically bigger sensors as, as well as the fact that they're set at a slightly different focal length than what we had last year. We have a 16 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, and a 70 millimeter equivalent lenses. And of course, the ability of using all three of them specifically with the native camera app, which is the default camera application. And it actually does a pretty decent job. And we also have, of course, an eight megapixel sensor in the front. Although personally for photography, I'm saying unless you're taking a picture, a selfie, and or you're trying to take basically a front facing video, my recommendation is to use the two other applications that they include directly out of the box. 
And first and foremost is the Cinema Pro application. This gives us the ability of configuring all of our experience here directly on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Uh, when it comes to basically not only selecting the type of video, we can also go now to 4K 60 frames per second directly natively supported here. We can jump between all three different uh, lenses if we're able to basically use the 4K 30 frames per second. 4K 60 primarily set at the 24 millimeter lens, of course, otherwise we jump into the, F, uh, the 16 millimeter at f2.2, the f1, uh, sorry, the 24 millimeter at f1.7, and the 70 millimeter at f2.4. Being that this is our best standard focal length, this is gonna be the best camera we can use. We can set the ISO, the shutter, the white balance, the focus, all of the things that you wanna be able to set. We have a level uh, meter here as well as an audio meter. Uh, of course, HDR, the type of codec that we're using, H.265, obviously for the best performance, battery percentage, as well as how much memory we have left. Starting the recording and grabbing images is pretty simple. Access to all of our files as well as projects. Again, you treat this like a pro level camera as it should be. One of the main benefits of using the external display capabilities that we have on the uh, Xperia 1 Mark II is that we can actually hook up an external display as well as use the 3.5mm headphone jack for an audio input. So what I'm doing for you guys right now is I'm using my Saramonic wireless microphone system connected via a 3.5mm headphone jack. I'm using the external display and I'm also using my Atmos uh, external display so I'm actually able to see what's going on. Now this is a 4K display. I don't think we're going to be using it to the full potential but again the ability of actually using my camera or the, the camera that we have here on the Xperia 1 Mark II as an actual DSLR or an, basically like a Sony Alpha camera experience basically from an input to an output experience configuring the lens setting up the actual project and actually seeing myself I have an audio meter that I can see and make sure that I actually am getting audio into the video and because when we record the actual image gets wider it fills up the display even more very nice very good and again high quality audio and the ability of actually walking away from my camera and still seeing what's going on on my display now the photography pro mode is very much the similar experience to what we've seen with the sony uh, alpha lens type of experience ability of jumping between uh, auto uh, priority you know basically shutter priority manual mode as well and of course the ability of customizing the entire experience let's go ahead and jump into here we have the menu settings tab. Again, all of the normal things that you're able to see directly within the Sony Xperia camera experience when we get out of a Sony Alpha or even an RX7100. Turning on the level as well as the histogram. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. Also the ability of selecting different lenses and zooming with them. So an example would be here. This is basically the equivalent lens. So the first one is a 16 millimeter lens that jumps between 16 and 24. So that'll be the 16. The 24 jumps between the 24 all the way up to 70. And I'm not switching lenses. This is not me switching between the 24 and the 70. That's basically the zoom capability provided for us. And last but not least, the ability of using the 7 millimeter and all the way up to the 200 millimeter lens. And that's generally the, what they refer to as the trinity, uh, basically the perfect trinity of lenses for any photographer. A 24, a 16, and a 70 millimeter that generally covers most of the focal lengths that a camera producer will be able to use. On top of the fact that we can also customize entirely all the experience between the bio, white balance, focal length, and again, we can jump into the, uh, auto mode, prior sh shutter priority, or even manual mode for best experiences. And as I'm showing you guys here with the pictures, obviously the pro mode is always gonna be the best experience. And unless you're trying to use the front facing camera, I feel like the experience is best uh, enjoyed here whenever you're using Photo Pro and Cinema Pro, and of course using the back sensors. One thing to keep in mind, Audio input for video is only available in Cinema Pro and not supported directly within the native camera application. One of the other things that we are able to benefit this year because of the fact that we have larger sensors is that the way Sony's processing the images now or trying to give us better images is not by trying to do post-processing uh, performance improvement. It's actually pre providing us a better experience capturing images before it even gets down to the software. Also, the fact that we have autofocusing now up to 20 times per second, which gives us the ability of actually refreshing and updating the information and also having much better eye autofocus as well as face auto detect. So one thing you'll notice here in the video that I'm showing you right now is that I'm actually trying to do an eye autofocusing on my cat. And that's something that's hard enough to do with a standard uh, smartphone. But because we have a dedicated camera button and we're able to do a half press on it, I can actually move around and the camera keeps focus on my cat, even if my cat is walking around. And of course, I'm able to take some great images there. But it also works great whenever you're trying to do it with, let's say, a moving subject in this video that I'm showing you guys right now. This is using the continuous shooting mode in high on the Xperia 1 Mark II while my son's trying to do an air kick. And even though it looks like it's stuttering, that's actually on me jumping from one image to another, putting it in the timeline. 
very nice and the beauty of it is the fact that his face and his entire body is always in focus regardless of what point in time the image is being taken and every single one of these shots could be used as an actual image which is really really nice again a lot of new improvements done directly on the cameras so that we can actually save time and of course get better quality images before we get to doing any kind of post processing on the device cameras aren't the only thing that sony did really good on this device one of the other things that they also did is they also improved the gaming experience and what i mean by this the game enhancer has received a few additional features that were added that we haven't seen before even the first generation of uh, devices so first and foremost let's go ahead and jump into PUBG and the game enhancer has a couple of options here that we kind of carried from last year but we also have the ability of customizing gaming mode is configurable down to the basically performance mode which essentially is full power balance mode battery uh, life preferred which essentially is battery savings but one of the other options we have here is the heat suppression power control or HS power control and this gives us the ability of actually using external power on our device when this is turned on and not actually use the internal battery or even charge it, reducing the amount of heat whenever we're trying to do an extended amount of gaming. This is no different than if you've ever taken the battery out of your laptop, plugged in power, and it just ran it on power, not having to worry about overheating or even running the, uh, the battery on the device. This will help us extend the life of the battery on this device, but not only that, making sure that we keep the thermals under control whenever we're doing it, basically long gaming sessions directly with any kind of game, either PUBG, Fortnite, or anything like that. The other option, of course, here is the ability of recording yourself included in the actual video. And that's something that's also new that we didn't have last year. So if you'd like to do uh, screen recording up to 1080p, that's natively supported, not just for gaming, but also the ability of jumping into the game and basically being part of it whenever you want to share that. Um, last but not least, of course, we still have that function from last year, which essentially gives us the ability of basically searching for other videos that relate to our uh, content straight in directly from the game enhancer. Very nice. A lot of cool tools that are built in. And of course, you have the ability of customizing it by swiping down or, you know, last but not least, changing the menu to basically be a floating button, which again, it will remember the preference exactly for each game the way you set it. For more gaming information, please make sure to check out that video that I posted for you guys. I actually did two videos for you guys covering the gaming experience on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about it before we get into the things that are concerning me is the audio experience was also improved on the Xperia 1 this year. Uh, first and foremost, we now have a 3.5mm headphone jack supported by a dedicated DAC. Um, it is not the strongest amp, uh, basically amp that is built into it, but definitely sounds good enough for us to enjoy content that are better than your standard or run-of-the-mill headphone jack on a smartphone. But the fact is, this actually came back after the first generation not having it is also a big thing saying that Sony is listening to their users. The front-facing speakers are actually front-facing speakers now. Bottom and top uh, grills are actually both facing us and no longer facing away from us. And of course, all of this is supported with the Dolby Atmos, uh, basically EQ configuration that we have in here. So audio is definitely going to be really nice straight from the speakers or even with the headphone jack. And what makes this even better is because of the fact that we have a headphone jack, we don't have to worry or deal with any kind of latency whenever we're playing games because games do not like lag. And of course, Bluetooth, as fast as it is, still suffers from a minor lag that unfortunately is very much present whenever we're watching or playing games, specifically on the Xperia 1 Mark II. This is kind of me generalizing the list of things that I really enjoyed about the Xperia 1, but let's talk about some of the things that are concerning me. And of course, we're going to talk about also some of the things that maybe Sony can do to fix some of these issues. First and foremost, at the beginning, I kind of talked to you guys about the, obviously, the ability of using and enjoying the 4K content on this device. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention is not necessarily a concern, but more so I just want to make sure to kind of set the expectations correct. The motion blur is nice, but it is not exactly a one to one 90 hertz refresh rate experience. This is a 4K panel. This is a 4K panel that is running beautifully at 60 frames per second. If you want to get that experience to be a little bit faster, a little bit smoother with the motion blur functionality, which enables them basically to reduce that blur effect whenever we're playing videos with high moving subjects. I think this is a good option. It's not exactly 90 frames per second, and I know a lot of people will probably refer to it as such, but I, f I feel like if you put this head to head with a device that is a true 90, sec uh, 90 frames per second refresh rate, you'll notice the difference. So as far as a concern, I would say it's a nice to have, it's great to have as far as a feature, but please make sure you set your expectations. So to be basically, it's something in between a 60 to 90 frames per second refresh rate device. The next thing we're gonna talk about is something that I received a lot of comments on this, either on Twitter or even in my videos. And I kind of understand the fact of the matter is that this device although supporting 5g in other markets will not be supporting 5g in the us in 2020 we have the snapdragon 865 with the x55 modem 
but I'm not sure exactly and I couldn't get a straight or basically a specific or a simple enough answer to explain why this is not supporting 5G in the US and will it support 5G in the US down the road. So at this point, it does not. My understanding is that the European model will. Um, so if you want to be able to get 5G using it in the US, make sure you uh, basically understand that this will not have it. If you pick up this device and you're using this in, in Europe, you may be able to pick up some 5G band depending on the carriers. LTE on this is actually not a slouch at all and I've been able to get pretty good speeds with some of my best experiences being at about 111 megabits down with 15 megabits up, which is again, not, not super fast, but also not slow. And of course, since 5G in the US is not exactly the fastest yet, I feel like we're, we may be in an okay situation for now, but in 2021, I'm not sure. If we start getting faster connections on 5G, some may actually consider that the 4G LTE is not enough. The next thing I want to talk to you about is obviously something that I personally use a lot. As a creator, as a creator, I feel like this device is intended for creators, people that are prosumers that want to be able to use these lenses as if they're using a Sony Alpha camera. First and foremost, the native camera application that we have here, the standard camera app, does support video and audio. The standard camera app only supports 4K, 30 frames per second, which is pretty much what we had last year with the Xperia 1. If you want to be able to use the, the 4K 60 frames per second, you have to use Cinema Pro. You cannot use it here, even if you're using the main sensors on the back. On top of that, you cannot use external audio with the native application. You need to jump into Cinema Pro. So if you've ever wanted to use external audio with the front facing camera on the Xperia 1 Mark II, you have to download Open Camera, which to me, I feel like is still something that should have just been resolved within the, uh, within the mechanics. I realize that Sony wants us to use the Cinema Pro more dedicatedly, but for a creator, person that generally will be creating content by themselves, I feel like not everybody's going to be using the camera rig that I'm showing you guys right now with the front facing display, external audio and Cinema Pro. I think most people will try to use this device with the built in camera on the front, although not the best one, and of course try to use external audio. So open camera has to be a solution and, and I wish they would add that back into the standard camera application with video as well as 4K 60 frames per second. The last thing I do want to talk to you guys is there's a few little hiccups here in the UI and I feel like these things obviously could be ironed out but I do want to mention to you guys that current version of this does have a little bit of an issue with Netflix for some reason so if I go into Netflix and let's say I launch a video and I play the video so let's go ahead and jump in here we'll play whichever here it is Space Force and you notice that the video is running in full screen I'll go ahead and close it bring up notice and you'll notice that the video is still running at the top. It's not supposed to, it's supposed to be in a pop-up window. If I try to play anywhere here, I'll try to go home, go back. It now jumps into the normal mode, but I'm not able to basically open anything or do anything with it anymore. It automatically just sits there. And I'm not sure if this is something that can be fixed, but you can notice that there's a little bit of a bug with Netflix and I hope this gets updated and of course works much better. And the last thing that I hope that they're able to provide us is a little bit better configuration. You'll notice that the dark mode option is something that we're able to turn on. So that's the dark theme, but watch the actual tone. This is actually dark. This is actually very much the dark mode that you want to be able to use to save battery on a smartphone because of the OLED panel. But if I jump into the actual settings menu, that entire settings menu is more of a dark gray than black. And I wish the theme would basically permeate the same color option here throughout the theme so that it saves me the, uh, the actual battery life. Which again, if you're in there and you're trying to configure things, you'll notice that everything is basically set up to be a more of a darker gray than it is a black. Although the option here, let's go ahead and turn it on as a dark theme. When you first get it, you get it standard up, turn it on. I don't really consider this one dark. I consider this more of a darker theme, not a dark theme. And this is truly more of the mode that you want to be able to use. So hopefully this could be fixed with some software optimizations, which I feel like can be done very easily. The Xperia 1 Mark II offers us a lot of cool things going on. I feel like it's a great media consumption, creator focused uh, type of a device and really trying to provide us that Sony Alpha experience on a smartphone. Also trying to provide us that Sony Walkman experience on a smartphone. And last but not least, Sony Cinema, the Sony uh, Pictures uh, experience on a smartphone. So for all of those things, I feel like they did a great job with the optimization that we had in this year. They gave us a bigger battery, wireless charging, and the list goes on. Uh, what I feel like the things that I'm sharing with you guys as a concern are things that are basically more of a uh, can be fixed with a software update, but also some things that I hope that Sony does focus and does bring it in. In the current version, for some reason, we don't have 4K 60 frames per second or external audio support directly with the native camera application. I realize why they do it with the Cinema Pro and I, re I appreciate that. But from a creator standpoint, if we ever want to be able to use the front facing camera, we cannot use external source unless we're using a separate application, which ends up at that point making them four. So natively, we have three camera application, standard camera application, Cinema Pro and Camera Pro. Now, if I want to be able to use front facing camera with audio from an external source, 
I have to install the fourth one, which again, Open Camera is a free app, but again, we should not necessarily have to do that. Uh, and most of them, as I mentioned, could be fixed with a software update. Uh, that little bug with, this, uh, with the Netflix application I've had for the last couple of weeks, and uh, from my understanding, I think it's just pretty much just a software update. And it may also have something to do with the creator mode that kicks in, because I noticed that I have it automatically set to do so. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Xperia 1 Mark II? Is this an exciting device to you as much as it is for me? And again, my list of concerns hopefully will be uh, addressed before this device is publicly available for all of us to be able to actually purchase. Uh, Pre-orders are going on right now, and if you do so, you are able to pick up a free pair of the, their Sony True Wireless headphones retailed about 230 bucks. Like and subscribe as usual, share this with all your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video.